Well, I think you have to start with a comparison between 1993 and uh, now, after the 2008 conflict, where many of the IDPs from Abkhazia, and there are over 150,000 of them, are still living in what we would call substandard facilities in converted hotels and dormitories. Georgia faced chaos and bankruptcy in the 1990s, and there was very little in the way of organized help the government was able to give um, IDPs from South from Abkhazia and from South Ossetia. Uh, the response to the South Ossetian war, or the war between Russia and Georgia in 2008, was notably different in that the government was very fast to respond to build temporary housing, semi-permanent housing for IDPs. But it's always difficult because there's a larger IDP population of as I said, well over 150,000, which exists, and it's been difficult to integrate them into the general population, let alone integrating 25,000 new IDPs who were forced uh, to leave their homes in South Ossetia. It's always a challenge. The international community and international standards, of course, emphasize that uh, IDPs have their right uh, of voluntary and safe return. The Georgian government, of course, considers that uh, um, IDPs emerged as a result of ethnic cleansing that was carried out in Abkhazia and South Ossetia. In South Ossetian uh, de facto authorities, uh, um, of course, not recognize the ethnic cleansing, and they openly say that, you know, IDPs cannot come back. Unfortunately, at present, the prospects for these people to return home are very bleak. The South Ossetian entity, the de facto government, which is fully supported by the Russian Federation and gets 99% of its budget from the Russian Federation and includes many Russian officials, um, has, as part of its policy, unfortunately, uh, stated that these people, these internally, internally displaced people, will never be able to return home. As a matter of fact, the villages where most of these people lived they were enclave villages in South Ossetia, mostly populated by ethnic Georgians. They were bulldozed, for the most part, well after the war ended, and after these people had fled, bulldozed, destroyed, systematically looted, taken apart, and the government, the de facto government in South Ossetia, said openly that these people will never be able to return home because their villages no longer exist. Crisis Group has always been emphasizing that uh, um, big political issues like status issues should be at some point um, set aside and smaller confidence building measures be adopted and this can be for instance uh, uh, freedom of uh, uh, movement across the administrative boundary line that is allowing local Georgian and South Ossetian communities to, um, to cross this boundary which is now completely sealed off by Russian FSP border guards. Our position has been that this um, uh, freedom of movement will allow people to communicate, to restore links. Another um, step that we proposed uh, was to allow the access of European monitoring emission uh, to South Ossetia at least uh, um, on an um, irregular basis to investigate uh, specific incidents that take place uh, in South Ossetia uh, at the uh, administrative boundary line. When incidents happen, uh, sides tend to uh, uh, interpret th things in mutually exclusive ways. So our argument is to have a neutral, objective um, monitor, an investigator on the ground who will uh, establish the facts uh, about this incident so that there are not mutually exclusive uh, um, um, statements and accusations.